I'd say most people that come in here have no idea. That Dr. Steven Johnson is about to take us into a place very few people have been. Cell phones, smartwatches, and anything that transmits are strictly prohibited because what happens in here affects and lift off what happens in space. I am part of a group that provides small power systems for NASA applications. Those power systems are called radioisotope thermoelectric generators, or RTGs. They cost around $100 million each and take years to complete. Since the 1960s, they've supported over 24 missions to space, including Apollo 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Typically they go for deep space missions, missions that are orbiting, say, Saturn, Jupiter, flying by Pluto, going into the Kuiper belt, which is the asteroid belt around our solar system. Before the power generators arrive at INL, they're at Oak Ridge and Los Alamos National Laboratories, where the components and heat sources are produced. We would receive a cask of material coming in through these double doors from Los Alamos. We would take out a container similar to this container, heavy duty stainless steel that had been welded shut and contained some of our heat sources. The generators then go into this inert atmospheric assembly chamber. Scientists use controllers to move these robotic arms as radioisotope heat sources are placed into the RTGs. When we're actually doing operations, this is filled with water. It's about one foot thick of water. Water is a very effective neutron shield. So it protects the people. The last generator finished here was in 2019 for the 2020 Mars Perseverance rover. They take around four months to build and undergo a series of tests to make sure they work. Inside this room, loud equipment simulates vibration and shock similar to what occurs on a spacecraft launch pad. We have uh, an armature here that will move up and down at a fairly high frequency. About 20 to 2,000 hertz is our testing profile. Um, with a lot of force, up to 30,000 pounds of force. In this orientation, uh, we'll test the Z-axis, and that shaker head will move up and down. And as we reorient the shaker to attach to the slip table, as we call it, we'll do the X and Y shake on this slip table. This is essentially one big woofer. So we have hearing protection on, sound deadening foam, all that sort of stuff. So, so it's it, really loud. It's really loud. And this is actually the one piece of equipment we've got that can physically damage the generator if we twist the knob a little bit too hard. After vibration testing, scientists closely measure the magnetic field produced from the generator. They need to make sure it won't interfere with the delicate instruments on the spacecraft. Your magnetic fields, if you're on a rover, you're gonna have instrumentation nearby. You're pretty doggone interested in making certain the magnetic fields don't screw up your instruments or else you have a really fast mission to Mars and zero data. Before the generator is ready to be shipped out, it's brought and put inside this large chamber where more rigorous testing is done. If it passes through there, it's on its way. This is the one that's currently on Mars on the Curiosity rover. It's been there since 2011. So we'll use a forklift to load the unit. It goes on the rail system up above and then we'll make both electrical and uh, gas connections to the unit. Once we have good signals and we understand that we've got good uh, feedback from the chamber itself in terms of temperatures and pressures, we'll actually shut the door and then we pull a vacuum. So we actually evacuate all of the gas out of the chamber, similar to space. If everything clears all the tests, the RTG is ready to go. It's loaded into a specialized shipping container and put onto a secure truck. It needs to be down there about four to six months prior to launch. As a valuable piece of U.S. property, it is escorted with lots of uh, armed men. Because RTGs are so unique, scientific, and expensive, nothing was spared when this facility was built. The walls are 12-inch poured concrete. The roof is 6-inch concrete. There are no windows, and the garage door can stand up to 88 mile per hour winds. Other buildings on site might fall down. This one won't. It may lose power, but it won't fall down. Again, that's to safeguard the RTG. And those RTGs, they're often called space batteries, but Johnson says that's technically not correct. Would you call it a battery? Nope, I call it a power system. It does not get recharged. It has a half-life, meaning it decays a half of the material in that 88 years. So when you've got 88 years and you still have half your power left, it's very suitable for doing 
long-term missions. And passing 45 seconds into flight. Missions that have been happening for decades and will continue being powered for many years to come because of what's happening here at INL. And liftoff. I'm Nate Eaton, eastidahonews.com.